Hi everybody, my name is Rodrigo and you're watching Travelzilla. Don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment, share, and subscribe and also to get ready because they're coming with me on a gondola ride. Let's go! I don't know why it took me so long to visit Venice, the land of two very important ancestral families of mine, the Pupo and the Morato, two proto-Italian families that have migrated from here to Portugal, lived there and intermarried with the Portuguese, and from Portugal these Italian-Portuguese people migrated onto Brazil, where there are thousands of their descendants. Some of them came from very old families of craftsmen, such as the Pupo, who are paper masters who took the paper manufacturing craftsmanship from Venice to Genoa, from Genoa to Braga in the north of Portugal and from Portugal to Rio in Brazil. I came to Venice to dive into my own history and culture and into the history of the city. In our mind, one of the first things that we imagine when we think of Venice is riding their amazing gondolas in one of the city's many canals. You can start your gondola ride in various spots spread throughout the city. As you walk around, you notice many gondolas coming in and out, packed with small groups of people. I think you should walk around the city first. Pick your favorite spots and then choose an area in which you'd like to explore riding Venice's most famous boat. Gente, o trânsito tá pesadíssimo aqui hoje, olha só. Eu sou rica! Sorry guys, I didn't mean to, but I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Rodrigo Morato. I'm your guide for the day, the narrator and the owner of this channel. And since we're both having a good time here, please drop a like, leave a comment, share and subscribe to this channel. And please follow me on Instagram, at Rodrigo Morato with two T's link in description and in the first comment written in the comment section of this video. Thank you. Like I was saying before, you can start your gondola ride in many different spots throughout the city. There is a variety of different gondola tours, itineraries and rides. Some include wine, tapas and even a serenade. Some gondola rides explore the less crowded canals and some explore the main canals combined with the smaller ones. Since we had explored areas such as San Marco, Castello, Canareggio intensively, we decided to go on a gondola ride in Dorso Duro, a neighborhood close to some important museums and that included the Grand Canal. Let's go! The history of gondolas is surrounded by mystery. Italy, Greece, Turkey and Malta all claim to be the place of origin of this very unique type of boat. But the oldest document ever found about the subject dates from 1094 and comes from Venice. 
It talks about a Venetian ruler called Vitale Faliero, who then donated several gondolum, you know, close enough to gondolas, right, in order to improve local transportation, thus avoiding a people's revolt. We decided to have Galleria della Academia, one of the city's most important museums, as our starting point. The first paints that depicted gondolas date from the 1400s. Great pieces painted by the likes of Carpaccio and Bellini are very well preserved and can still be seen here. Despite being much older, it was only in the 16 and 1700s that the use of gondolas became widely spread in Venice. Remember that you can choose to start your gondola ride in different spots, but the prices are fixed and shouldn't change. If any gondolier tries to charge you more than 80 euros for a 30 minute ride, don't close the deal. And remember, the price is for the entire gondola. Each gondola holds up to six people at a time. The boats were a status symbol, which meant that the designs became more and more extravagant as time passed, until the local government decided that all boats should be painted black, something that happened in the 16th century and that lasts to this very day. In the 17th century, at the end of the Italian Renaissance, Venice had a fleet of 10,000 boats of this kind. Today there are only about 400 gondolas in the entire city of Venice. Então, galera, agora a gente vai fazer um passeio de gondola, tocar aqui com as destruidoras Poliane ah, e Renaldi. Ah. E agora a gente vai fazer um passeio de gondola, porque é, eu já, já falei. Tô falando de novo para você não esquecer. Aí, aí sim, de português, mas I don't speak, não speak português. Oh, it's totally fine. Now, when it comes to prices for the gondola, we paid 80 euros. It's a maximum of six people, so five, six. A maximum of six people for 80 euros per boat. So if you are in more than um, one or two or three, whatever, you're just gonna have to share that. So for us, it was for three people, 26.66 euros per person. Um, and the ride is about 30 minutes long pretty much it it's beautiful and then tomorrow she's going to paris right right and she's going to um milan and then um amsterdam and then and then canada and i'm taking my stepfather and my mom not taking them i'm going with them we're going to slovenia Ooh, must watch that video it's gonna be nuts because we're gonna go there by bus now we're just riding the gondola. It's your first time in Venice. You first like time. Mine's the second. Oh yes, yeah, hers is the second. Mine's the first time. She's the first time as well. Now it's time to talk about a very noble profession, the gondoliers, a community known to be impenetrable for generations. The profession of a gondolier was made official as a proper profession in the 16th century. From then on, the title was passed from fathers to their sons for many generations, which meant that they stayed in the same families for a long time. The gondoliers became a very important class of people in the Venetian society because it was more than just a job. They became the keepers of the city and they knew all of the secrets 
the suppressed scandals, so on and so forth. They knew what really happened, what really went on behind the scenes. This palace on the left is Palace Nani Mocinigo. It's an important hotel with four stars. During our gondola ride, we've come across an old gondola factory called Schero San Trovaso. You can actually visit the place, but you must book in advance because the tour is for no more than 25 people at a time. It takes two months for a gondola to be made and the manufacturing of it can only be made by a handful of people these days. Gondola manufacturers must respect a code that should be strictly followed called Mariregoli. The gondola measures 11 meters or 36.1 feet in length and weights around 1,322 pounds or 600 kilos. The iron or ferro located at the tip of the boat isn't only the counterpoint to the gondolier. Before we go any further, let's have a look at the tip of all gondolas. Please pay attention. Now, have you paid attention to the shape of the iron located at the front tip of all boats? Now, let's have a look at the map of Venice from space. Now, let's have a look at another angle of the image of Venice from space. Yeah, that's right, the gondola has the shape of the city of Venice, including all of its six main neighborhoods. It's a stylized map of the city of Venice. It's a sensational idea, I love it, and I never knew about it. I'm sorry, because it's a difficult turn, and it's possible to touch with the boat. Yes, uh, I don't know the really reason. I think because uh, in the past, uh, the carnival uh, was, uh, yes, with the mask. The, the, the normal people, the, like, uh, uh, like the Venetian people, go to do the party. But in this party, also the famous people go. Oh, so they can go and it, get crazy uh, Like and uh, the famous people or the poor people. But you don't know who who, who the people are uh, under the mask. Yeah. And it's because uh, with the mask, all the people are, the, are, all the, are the same. To become a gondolier today, one must go through a very tough selective process, which includes going to a gondola school, studying the physics of rowing, the history of the city, the learning of foreign languages, and test their physical abilities too. After an intensive training period, one must take a very difficult test which is also very highly competitive, by the way, administered by a gondola instructor. You must go through an internship and pass a very tough exam to only then get a license to finally become a proper gondolier. This is the Stern Palace. Eight types of wood must be used in the making of a gondola, and they are mahogany, cherry, fir, walnut, oak, elm, larch, and lime. Each type of wood is to be used in a very specific part of this magnificent type of boat. Thanks a lot, Giovanni. You're a star. Please look out for Giovanni. He usually parks his gondola in front of the museum Galleria dell'Accademia.
Guys, thank you so much for being with me all the way to the end of this video. Don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment, share, and subscribe. And also follow me on Instagram at Rodrigo Morato with two T's link in description and in the first comment of the comment section right below this video, okay? Please watch all my other videos. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. And don't forget to visit Venice. It's amazing.